Linda LaPlante vanished. Killers don't just disappear. Never read Linda LaPlante before, so this would be interesting. A savage murder, a detective on the edge, a killer who can't be traced. When an eccentric widow, when an eccentric widow claims she is being stalked by her former lodger, Detective Jack War is the only person who believes her wild claims. Days later, she is found brutally murdered in her home. When the investigation uncovers an international drugs operation on the widow's property, the case grows even more complex. And as the hunt for the widow's lodger hits dead end after dead end, it seems that the prime suspect has vanished without a trace. To find answers, Jack must decide how far he is willing to go and what he is willing to risk in his search for justice. Because if he crosses the line of the law, one wrong move could cost him everything. The UK's most celebrated female crime author, Daily Mail. Linda LaPlante practically invented the thriller. Kerin Slaughter. So I picked this up on the off chance because I forgot to bring my other book with me. Um, apparently, she, well, she's written loads of books, Linda LaPlante. She's been around for, for a long time. But I thought I'd give it a go and see where we get. So this is about Linda. Linda was born in Liverpool. She trained for the stage at RADA and worked for the National Theatre and RSC before becoming a television actress. She then turned to writing and made her breakthrough with the phenomenally successful TV series, Widows. She has written over 30 international novels, all of which have been bestsellers, and is the creator of Anna Travis, Lorraine Page, and the Trials and Tribulation series. Her original script for, so her original script for the much acclaimed Prime Suspect won awards from BAFTA, Emmy, British Broadcasting and Royal Television Society, as well as the 1993 Edgar Allan Poe Award. Linda is one of the only three screenwriters to have been made an honorary fellow of the British Film Institute and was awarded the BAFTA Dennis Potter Best Writer Award in 2000. In 2008, she was awarded the CBE on, in the Queen's Birthday Honours Lists for services to literature, drama and charity. So there you go. I'll find out a little bit more about her and put it in here. I'm sitting on the balcony of my friend's condo, looking out at the view. Let's show you. There are dolphins out there. I keep trying to catch them, but uh, those little buggers, they know I'm watching them. They keep disappearing, and the moment I stop filming, they appear again. Yeah, they're out there somewhere. I'll find them. And there's raccoons down there, again, avoiding the camera. Don't you worry, I've got patience. I've got the patience of a saint. I'll catch them. Oh yeah. Especially the raccoons, I love raccoons. Crazy, bat crazy things they are. Right, anyway, I'm gonna get reading before we go out for dinner. you guys later. and it's a little bit dark even though it's not oh, not that early I don't know oh, there we go there we go oops <laughs> how are you oh, yeah I'm sorry just woken up I'm enjoying this and I'm really liking the way Linda LaPlante writes 
I'm a little bit annoyed with myself that I hadn't read some of her stuff before. Sorry, get the angle right. Um, yes. Got a feeling I'm going to like it. How are you today? You okay? I had my nails done yesterday. These are my proper nails. They're not fakies. They just um, put a French polish. They've actually made them shorter, which has surprised me because they weren't that long. Uh, I was really proud of my thumbs. That's the longest they'd grown in a long time. But they're much harder because my, my nails are very, very... um. Thin, they, they, they're brittle and then they flake, down to the job I do. And they wanted to put on uh, fake tips and I was like, no, I don't want any fake on there. Mainly because when I get back to work in a week, um, they just, they ping off. And then I won't know what to do with myself. And I've had my toes done as well. I shall, um, I'll get the shot of that later. It's exactly the same as this and look really good. Yeah, so anyway, just a little update. I've only just started it. I'm probably only on paid. I can't read it because I've got gloss. First um, couple of chapters, probably about page 20 or something like that. But yeah, it's meant to be raining today, so I'm not sure what we're doing. Uh, we were going to go to NASA today, the Space Centre, but um, I think they're calling, calling it and we're going to go Friday instead. I know, and my friend's got a few things to do in the house. With it being on the market, she wants it um, pristine. She's got some new curtains to press and stuff like that. May watch a film. Don't know. We're not in any uh, rush to do anything, really. Space Center, Blizzard Beach, and Star Wars attraction, which I've probably told you about several times. Uh, that's on the agenda, and that's about it. I do need some more gym trainers, which I might ask if there's. Uh, a gym shop somewhere. I think Connor, my instructor, rec recommended Metron trainers or something. That could be completely wrong. Uh, the old girl in me doesn't remember things these days. So, um, yeah. Anyway. It's good. See you later. <laughs> i got to stop doing the eyebrow waggle. I don't know why I'm doing it. Why do I waggle my eyebrows? Don't know. Don't know. <laughs> yes, yeah, so look. I'm not a fan of my toesies, but don't they look sweet? So I'm matching. I've got some lovely glittery sandals that I wear. Um, so oh, yeah, when I go out in my party dress. I know, I know what you're going to say. Good to yourself, right? Although that did cost me £85. Not including $20 tip. Because you have to tip everything. Mainly because their wages are so shit. They get their money back on their tips. So if you come to America, please tip them. They're probably only on about $2 an hour. American dream, huh? Anyway, yeah. <laughs> so the alleged lodger of Admiral Jenkins keeps breaking into her house and stealing things, but things that aren't worth any value uh, trying to make the old woman look mad and two of them were um, two statues that went missing but were later found by the police to be in the dishwasher so the police think that she's a little eccentric old lady that hasn't got a clue but Jack War um, the police detective that's gone in actually thinks that maybe she isn't crazy because even though she said 14 items have been stolen by this man breaking into a house that she chases off with a with a fire poker um everything about her statements is consistent it doesn't say that she's a crazy old lady at all it says that she actually knows what she's talking about so he's starting to think that even though kingston police station think that she's crazy he's starting to think that maybe she's not maybe there is some truth in what she's saying and the guy that's breaking into her house is trying to make her look mad. 
and I actually really like Apple Jenkins. I, I can't remember, I think she's in her 70s, but she just seems to be like a really, a ballsy, a ballsy lady. I think um, Jack Wall quite likes her as well. So I've just got into that. He's engaged to a girl called, um, that's not Laura, Maggie, uh, who works in the hospital. Uh, in operations to do with hearts and his mother's called Penny and his assistant's called Laura. I, I don't know what her surname is yet. And uh, he seems quite a nice chap. Seems a little bit soft, a bit sensitive. And he's, uh, well, his girlfriend Maggie is planning a wedding that's cost, gonna cost him an arm and a leg. And he keeps going on about a young girl. I think it's his daughter called Hannah. But I'm not sure that that's Maggie's. I think that's a, a daughter from another relationship. I'm enjoying it. I'm on chapter two. I'm reading it quite slowly because I keep looking out for dolphins that are there but won't let me catch them. Well, what can I tell you? Nothing. Apart from the fact I've been eating chocolate and I never eat chocolate and I've got spots. <sighs> right, hang on. Give me a minute. It's a bit early. That's why it's so peaceful. I'm actually really enjoying the way she writes. So I'm going to be squinting because it's it's not bright, but it's quite glary. Um, the, the eccentric little old lady who's fantastic and very caustic and, um, and rude. I can't remember her surname, Avril the old girl she's been found murdered in her bathroom and dismembered um, limbs off and they tried to um, decapitate her but hadn't quite managed it so her head was sort of like hanging on by a thread and um, the guy um, Jack War who's in charge he feels really guilty because he's like I, she came for help and um, two police constabularies have turned her away as an eccentric old lady and he had practically written off saying, no, she's crazy. And before he could file it, um, she was found murdered. So luckily that saved his face a bit. But he'd been on the property and um, literally walked past things that the police were saying, well, we need to find this and we need to find that. And he'd actually walked past them when he was talking to the old girl. The silver Porsche that um, the lodger was driving around in was actually in the garage he'd been leaning up against and things like that. But they found a massive drugs den and um, outbuildings, cannabis was being grown and uh, Fendall, is it? No, I don't know what it's called. I don't know anything about drugs at all. Um, so one of the biggest drugs busts they've ever done and it was a big, uh, big organisation going on being made around her house and they're like, it's impossible that the old girl didn't know it was there, but it, of course it is possible the old girl didn't know it was there because if she didn't go into the greenhouse, she wouldn't know, would she? Um, his big boss, Ryan, somebody or other, has become a bit distant and everybody thinks he's retiring, but I actually think, um, I don't think he's retiring. I think maybe he's poorly or got cancer or something and he, he doesn't want to tell people. Um, not sure about that one yet. I'm only on page 92, probably chapter, I don't know what chapter, nine or 10, um, but I'm, I'm really enjoying it. I'm only um, snatching reading time because obviously um, I'm here on holiday with my friend Ange and uh, obviously I don't want to be sitting here reading all the time or filming all the time so it's a bit spasmodic. Um, my amblings and ramblings video is just going to be com discombobulated completely and just bits in there and everywhere. It won't make sense to anybody but it will to me so that's fine. I'm going to carry on reading for a bit. It's a little bit early. Not too bad, it's only 8 o'clock, but Ange always talks to her family in the morning, so, because it's like 12, 12 1 o'clock in England in the afternoon, so she chats to them for a couple of hours in the morning, so I get a couple of hours to read and look for dolphins, who are being elusive to the camera. I'm seeing lots of them when I haven't got my camera. When I have got my camera, buggers dive under, don't they? They're about. Anyway. Catch you guys later.
do see Jack War is a really nice character. He's got feelings, he cares about people, he's got a conscience. Um, he's work they're working hand in hand with the drugs uh, squad, which has got an American guy that comes in to help, has come in to help because the drugs that are being dealt out here are, mass are prolific in America and they can't control it. So they've come over here to help try and get a hand in controlling it before it hits in, uh, Britain too big. Uh, but the drug squad are more interested in getting the drugs. Uh, so when two people are dead, the old lady and uh, Jessica Chai, who's the girlfriend of Adam Border, um, they're, dead, they're found dead. Um, the drug squads can't even remember the name of the victims because it's not important to them. And Jack Wall's got really upset about that. It's like they're human beings and the whole point of this is because we're trying to find the murderers. So you've got the drugs investigation going on and then you've got the murder investigation going on by two completely different branches of the police force. Um, there's a little bit of friction between the two and it's, it's quite, it's good. I'm enjoying it. Um, I like his family, his mummy, his mum Penny, his daughter Hannah and his uh, fiance Maggie who's spending an awful lot of money getting the wedding preparations organised and it looks like Hannah is theirs, so they're just not married. And there's a, a really irritating teenager, Tanya Wetlock, who's the daughter of Maggie's top, top surgeon who she really wants to impress because he's the, he's the big bollocks. Um, and it, she keeps turning up drunk and if he's not careful, there's, there's going to be allegations of her rape and inappropriate stuff, which isn't happening, but she's going to scream it, um, <clears throat> which is a big worry for Jack War, obviously. Uh, but it turns out this big high-flying doctor that everybody worships and wants to marry is a bit of a wet fart, really, um, and has got no control over his daughter and no control over anything except for the job he does. So... That's all really interesting. It just goes to prove just because your big boss seems to be good at his job, it turns out that he's actually a Mr. Nobody when he gets home. Always remember that. Yeah. Somebody might be really good at their job, say they're really good at uh, talking to people on the phone, but I bet they can't roller skate as good as you can. You can always do something better than them. Just, just remember, nobody's better than anybody else. They just happen to be better at some things, which you are better at some things they can't do so uh, yeah i'm enjoying it kiki's back and he's gone again he's always doing something never sitting down unless it's in his cinema room watching films which is fantastic god if i ever made any money i'd get rid of the bedroom have a cinema room i watched jungle cruise i think i might have already said Worst film ever. Probably worst film ever. It's got the rock in it. It's always worth him with the rock, but I didn't even there. Nah. What's the other one? Oh, Wonka. Yeah, that that was good. Q Laurie as the Oompa Loompa. Although I did, he wasn't in it very much. I did expect a bigger part. He wasn't in it very much. But what he was in, hilarious. He's coming back. He's going out again. Loveliest man in the world. Always busy. Always Mr. Practical. Right, what else was I saying? Oh yes, there's a, there's a young cop in here that's really irritating to everybody called Anvil, uh, they sent him across to Holland because the, there's a lot of, there's something to do with Adam Border's father being Dutch. Um, and uh, Avril, the lady in it, she's a, she's been a bit of a girl in her time. And uh, she, it turns out that Adam Border looks like it's her son, although that does seem to be a pseudonym. I don't think that's his name because they can't find trace of him anywhere. Um, so he's completely disappeared, can't find him anywhere. The stolen jewellery has been dug up in the garden, so it looks like she's buried the jewellery and said that it's stolen. A rucksack, a duffel bag's been found in a big lake in a bit of woodland that's behind the house that they've 
uh, discovered belonged to the uh, dead lady's husband and herself. They bought it so that they couldn't get built on, but uh, nobody knew they owned it. So there's a big pond in there where this duffel bag was found with Jessica Tries overnight stuff in it. And then she's been found burnt alive in the um, greenhouse where all the cannabis was being made, which looks like Avril knew about because she was making that CBT or CBD um, oil for her friends, not charging, just making it so and giving it out so it helps people with their um, pain, aches and pains, but nothing illegal. But behind that, masses of illegal stuff. And there's a secret building underneath the house. Uh, there's two outbuildings with secret compartments with all this stuff being made. And there's video footage of Avril being um, snatched from behind by three men and taken upstairs, which they think is the murder. I'm not sure because they said that a uh, Range Rover did a spinning wheel thing and drove out really fast. I'm not being funny. Avril would have heard that. And she was attacked from behind and had no clue. So, yeah, the timings, there's different timings. And it's it's very clever because Linda LaPlante's written it. So they're finding snapshots of CCT footage. But at the moment, it's not running in a time scale, so they're getting snapshots from here, snapshots from there. So you're not actually got a time scale of the murder of Avril yet. I should imagine there's a massive plot line there. Um, his, is it Laura? I think it's Laura, his partner, um, Jack Wall's partner. Any man that's got a scent, she's after him. Um, but only the ones that are not interested in her. The ones that are interested in her, she's not interested in. So she's she's quite a funny character, and she thinks that um, she's been overruled quite a lot, which she is. But um, Jack Wall's not doing it deliberately, and Ridley isn't retiring. He does have cancer, but I guess that much. But it's all very intriguing, and I really don't know uh, what's going on. And they need to find Adam, really, whether he's alive or dead. We don't know. He seems like a big fish, but I actually think he's a small fish in a very big pond and uh, yeah there's lots of people above him and he's expendable so it wouldn't surprise me if he's dead as well but then who killed him it's good going off to NASA in a minute or the space centre so I'm going to do that That'd be on my amblings and ramblings, but I might put I might put a little snippet in here. Yeah. Catch you later. Oh my goodness, Jack War accepted a bribe of hundreds of thousands of pounds and the woman who he allowed to go free is standing in the back of his wedding photographs. That surprised me. I didn't think he was going to be a bad boy like that. There was a hint that he paid a massive amount of money to somebody over a charity thing and I'm thinking he's only a copper. Where did he get that money from? Now, Julie Lawson, the ringleader of one of the biggest robberies, standing in the back of his wedding photographs. He's been laid off the case because he's getting too close to the Irish connection, which the drug, drug squad are looking into. And uh, the DCI, Lewis, who's the leader of the drug squad, doesn't like him anywhere near it because he's treading on toes. So he's been called off it and... There's been a punch up outside the chip shop after his uh, stag do, where him and Ridley, his box, take on four young kids and injure two of them. And one of them said, "The next day, the next uh, celebration after your wedding is going to be a funeral." So obviously that's going to come back and haunt him. Ridley's feeling really lonely, realizing he's got nobody to leave anything to. If he died. wasn't expecting that. Oh, excuse me. Looking gorgeous as always. <laughs> oh, 
so I finished it. Yeah, read it in, uh, I don't know, about five days, I think. I wasn't reading it completely all the time. Um, it was. I really enjoyed it. I really, I'm going to be reading more Linda Laplante. I didn't realise um, that there were two more before this one. It did say in here, but I can't, uh, I'll have to find it. Give me a minute. Um, I don't know whether it's the front or the back. There's lots of things to join online for Linda Laplante. She's obviously very uh, tech savvy with all of the uh, Instagram and Facebook and there's a, a, a reading club and stuff like that. Right, so I know it's in here somewhere. I'm just waffling until I find it. You know me. Um, right, Judas Horse, which is the first one with DCI. Jake War, Jack War. They've only just finished reading it. <laughs> and then Buried, which is advertised on the front there. So I'm gonna I'm gonna get those because I like Jack War. But he's obviously a bit of a naughty boy because he's he's done bribes and things like that. Um just making my bed ready for us to go out later. Yeah, he's done bribes and stuff. Oh. I'll move from there. Uh, and he's he's let he's let people go um that should have been in prison. Not he hasn't let murderers go, I'll point that out. It's, I don't think I can rest you anywhere high enough. Um I'm trying to find somewhere to rest you. But it doesn't look like it's going to happen. Not unless I come down really low. Off the bed. There we go. It's that very sultry slump. Yeah, she, uh, bank robbers, a lady, and, and whole set of bank, lady bank robbers. But they were um, fostering children. And it was like a bit like a female Robin Hood type thing. So he allowed them to go. But one of them's come back into the country, which he used for information, but didn't grass her up. But then again, if he had grassed her up, she'd have grassed him up because she gave him like a hundred thousand um, pounds to let them go. So, and he took it. What was the other thing? He'd done something else as well that came out. Yeah, I don't think. I know he shouldn't have let them go. I'm not condoning that. Um, but he didn't let people go that were murderers. He really needed to catch the murderer of um, Avril and Jessica Chai and uh, found Adam Border, who actually I quite liked. Um, he got away too, but he got away under conditions of giving a video which um, pinned the murderer, that he'd filmed the, the murder of um, Avril, who was Adam Border's mother, but he didn't like her. It's, it's very in-depth and it's very good. I actually felt sorry for Ridley in the end because um, when Adam got married, um, his mother lives with them, Penny to look after their daughter, Hannah. But Penny was very upset because the father had died. Because Adam's... Not Adam, sorry. Jack is actually adopted. I can't stay. Jack's actually actually adopted by Penny. And the father, but the father had died. I think it was George. And Penny was all upset saying, you know, I wish your father was here. I'm going to be at your wedding on my own, blah, blah, blah. And Ridley stepped up, um, Jack's boss, and uh, escorted her down there and made sure at the uh, reception and everything she wasn't on her own. And she goes, oh, it's very kind of you, Jack, um, Ridley, but I do have friends um, over there. And she went and sat with them and left him at the bar. And he was making sure she was okay and no doubt making sure that he wasn't on his own but it turns out he was on his own and I felt really sorry for him uh yeah because he was suffering with um I think it was prostate cancer but it hadn't spread it was in recline so not recline remission it was in remission so yeah it was nice the very personable people and the the bad guy in it the, the drag 
the Jag driver, they eventually caught up with him and he was a nasty piece of work. Um, and yeah, very threatening. And thankfully the police were there to stop him from attacking anybody when they laid him with the uh, murder charges. Even his solicitor or lawyer was terrified of him in the end. So that was good. I got funny, um, it's, it's almost like reading about Kenneth Noyle. Noyle? No, anyway, a, a very nasty man that died a few years ago that was very, very violent. Reminded me a bit of him, the the, the Jag driver. Sorry, a bit discombobulated. I've only just woken up. I've been sleeping. That's all I've been doing, sleeping and eating. Christ. I've only got a couple of days left and I'm going home. I think it's a lazy day today because it's Sunday, Mother's Day. I've spoken to my mum. She was all teary, so I hung up on her. Um, tomorrow is Star Wars. Monday, Tuesday is a lazy day. No, we would do summer Tuesday and then get out with the girls. And Wednesday, I fly home. So, very quickly, I'm going home. It don't take long, does it? I've already had my PT ringing up saying, hey, what's happening? And I'm like, yeah, not, not home yet. But Angie and Keith are up. The, the clocks went forward last night, so it's earlier. It's later than I thought it was, but it doesn't feel like it. And I've just done a message come through. So yes, Linda Laplante, I would highly recommend it. I'll give that four and a half stars. I really enjoyed it. Uh, very unusual for me to give five star ratings. I don't tend to give star ratings, but that was a good one. Recommend hers. I really like the way she wrote. Very, um, very readable. Yeah, that's very readable. Written well. Um, there's no loose things in there. Nothing hanging out. Um, not many bad her herrings either, you just knew it fitted in somewhere. Um, and the people in it, I really liked. So I'd like to read more. But I'm definitely going to read them from the start. I'm going to see if I can get Judas, Horse and then Buried. I didn't realise um, there was others. I thought that was the first one. So there you go, just goes to prove what I know. And I'm going to have a look at her online sites and uh, see what see what that's all about. I love keeping up to date with authors. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to drink the coffee. Go and annoy my friends, because that's why I was put on this planet. And then maybe I might have a chance to edit this video today and stick it up. Boom in an R in and not get my sentences together. You know, normal. Now I need to decide what book I'm reading next because I didn't bring the eight liars with me. Let's see what my friends got. If not, I just have to wait until they get home. <laughs>